We're very happy and excited to be here at the first Authenticate conference. Uh, my name is Ashish Jain, and uh, I lead identity and risk engineering team at eBay. And with me, I have Anand Bahethi, who is the engineering manager for our authentication uh, team here at eBay. So we have been at this passwordless journey for the last couple of years, and we still have some ways to go, uh, but we have made a lot of progress. And in the session today, we would like to share some of the learnings and challenges that we came across as we went through our deployment, primarily around the FIDO protocols. And before we get started and go into the implementation details, I wanted to set some context uh, around eBay in general and our deployment environment. At a very high level, eBay has around 180 million active users. And for the most part, uh, you need to be able to have an account either as a seller or a buyer to be able to transact at eBay. We do have a small population that can do transactions based as a guest, but registration and authentication is required for the most part. On an average, we do about 20 to 25 billion a quarter in terms of GMV. So that roughly equates to you know, somewhere around 80 to 100 billion dollar volume a year. And that should give you some idea of the scale that we operate at. In terms of our geo presence, we operate in 190 markets. And the reason why this is kind of critical is that when we look at any solution or any product or any experience, whether it is a sign in experience or browse or search or checkout, we kind of have to look at it from a global lens. The, the behavior and the profile of the users that shop at our platform and the type and the capabilities of the devices that we see on our platform, it varies a lot from country to country and the type of profiles. And hence, we have to be inclusive into any solution or any product that we built into the platform. And the last point I wanna highlight is that we have been in the business for 25 plus years. In fact, we celebrated our 25th anniversary uh, just a few weeks ago. And the reason why this is relevant in the context of authentication is that over a period of time, uh, you end up creating a bunch of code and a bunch of stack that ends up being legacy. And when you have to build a solution, you have to take that into account. And you know, as, as technologists, sometimes we wanna iterate faster, we wanna move faster. Uh, but if any one of you, you know, if you've been in the industry for a long time, you kind of realize that most of us have to operate into you know, the environment that we already have and do the balance in kind of new development and the existing systems. And hence, when you build a new authentication protocol and a method, if you're starting from scratch, then you will look at the problem slightly differently than you will look at a problem when you have an existing large customer base, uh, a fairly comprehensive technology stack and a business that you need to continue to run as you innovate on top of the existing platform. Now, we started on this journey, like I mentioned, around two plus years ago. And we first started, if you see the screen on the left, where we had a single screen uh, around registration and sign in. And for the most part, we only supported password-based authentication. Since then, we have kind of come a long way in our journey to continue to do be passwordless. And we started by supporting Facebook and Google. And then most recently, we just added the Apple sign-in. We also implemented uh, what we call the ID first flow, where you decouple the registration and authentication into two separate screens. So if you see on the, on the middle screen, we only ask for an email. We do the discovery, and it allows us to figure out what was the right authentication method on this device based on your preference, that is what we should show. And then most recently, we have now implemented uh, both the UAF protocol and the web authentic protocol to continue to increase our authentication experience. Having said that, you know, I mentioned that we operate in 190 markets. We have a very, very diverse set of customer base. And what we have come to realize is that there is not really a single authentication method that can fit the needs of our all customer base. 
Uh, and you know, this is a, a set of methods that we support today, how you can do account access at eBay, you know, whether it's username or email verification or SMS. And if you think about it, it's only a subset of the methods that we have experimented with. And we continue to look for additional ways we can support our customer base. When we look at any kind of an authentication method, there is a set of constraints or a set of conditions that we kind of look very deeply uh, to make sure it fits the needs of our business. The first one in the list is around uh, just the security. As many of you know, eBay is a is an e-commerce marketplace. We enable uh, transactions across strangers, across continents. And the number one thing that the users come to us is the trust in the platform. So anything that we do, not just around sign-in, the security ends up taking the number one priority of how we evaluate things and how we explore things. The second one, which is not very far behind, is just the experience and the friction that we may end up introducing. At the end of the day, identity and authentication and sign-in are means to an end. And we have to make sure that whatever experience we pick is not going to hamper the eventual experience that we want to give it to the end user. And you know, as a as a as I came from the B two B space into a B two C space, I kind of came to realize how critical the abandonment is for the consumer industry. So we measure kind of every uh, every click, we measure every content, and we do a bunch of A B tests. We can create a very very secure protocol. But at the end of the day, if we do not see enough adoption or if we see dropout in our conversion rate, it is not going to give us what we need. And hence, the usability goes very much hand in hand with the security for any authentication solution that we end up picking. The third part is around maintainability. And the reason I mentioned that is given our customer base, uh, we need to make sure that whatever solution we we are able to support that for a very, very long period of time. Uh, and you know, as, as technologists, we sometimes have the desire to, to iterate more quickly, uh, but it is harder to deprecate stuff once it is on the platform when you are running at a scale that we run at eBay. So in between kind of these uh, uh, kind of a guiding principles of how we mostly pick any solution, and we looked at the FIDO uh, and the authentication flow with these kind of lens. And we did a bunch of usability studies. We did a, a small focus groups and we eventually ended up deciding to go ahead and implement it. And you know, I strongly encourage you to, to go and try it at ebay.com of how we support uh, the UAF and push notification and how we support the web authen and device biometric based login. And Anand will kind of take you through some of the deployment flows, some of the challenges that we came across as we went through the experience. So on that note, I'm going to hand over to Anand. Hey, thank you, Ashish, for the background. And hello, everyone. So while uh, we were just looking to enhance our authentication framework with the background Ashish just said, there comes FIDO, the latest industry standard in the field for authentication. It is one of its kind, which is trying to bridge the gap between security and usability, and also addresses most of the attack vectors. Hence, we were very early to adopt the FIDO UAF protocol to provide biometric-based authentication into the eBay apps on iOS and Android platforms. That brings a lot of goodness uh, to the native app world, but what about web? other channels where the users come and access eBay and try to sign into their account. How do we bridge the gap there, bring security and usability at the same time? Keeping maintainability in mind, we want it as far as possible to see if we can reuse the existing FIDO deployment architecture and then just enhance it so that we can cover this gap. After considering various solutions, we ended up deciding to use push notification as a delivery mechanism and the FIDO protocol to achieve security and bridge this gap across all the platforms. So before we go further, the first question which might come to anyone's mind is why push notifications, right? So let me quickly go over, go over the points we considered. 
Well, we could leverage the widespread EP app adoption in already the iOS and Android platforms. They are user-friendly and provide seamless access to the application. Usability is not a barrier at all, and we do not have to spend time and resources to educate the users how to use them. Last but not the least, alerting. It might sound trivial that, hey, push notification alerts a user, but what it comes to a bonus here is that it helps alert the user before an actual authentication takes place against an account. They get the full control to either approve or reject it. And it's much better than other systems where users are generally notified much later in the game after the damage has already happened against their account. So let's look at the architecture and the protocol handshake of how this framework works. Here's the registration protocol. On the left, we have the eBay app which is shipped with the FIDO client libraries, and then we host the FIDO server on the eBay server side. By the way, both these protocols have been open sourced and I will be providing references to them at the end. To initiate registration, the native app initiates the registration protocol with the eBay server. It then asks the user to enroll into the flow and generates a public and private key pair. It sends the public key part of the key pair along with some protocol handshake data to the eBay server to finish the registration. The eBay server only stores the public key against the user record. As you can see, the private key is securely stored on the device so far. Let's see how this setup aids authentication. So we have the same setup for authentication. And whenever the user tries to authenticate against their account, we send a push notification to their enrolled device. On receiving the notification, the client app initiates the authentication protocol with the server. This also helps us validate whether the request is valid or not. The user then approves the request and the app uses the private key to sign the payload in the notification and send it back to the server. eBay server verifies the signature using the public key stored against the user record. And once it's verified, the authentication attempt is approved. Even in order to deny an attempt, we use the same exact mechanism to achieve security in both the cases. As you can see, the private key never leaves the user's device. Let's look at further nuances of this implementation. What goes into the payload for notification? It's only the transaction identifier. It's short-lived, one-time use, and by itself of no use. You cannot just present it to any resource at eBay. Hence, Nothing sensitive is going over the wire and we can avoid the need to set up an end-to-end -end TLS secure channel to secure the notification payload. We are reusing the existing FIDO deployment and just enhancing it with push notifications as a delivery mechanism, which helps us maintain the architecture and reduce the maintenance cost for the feature. We also did easy and flexible integration into the existing eBay apps and didn't have to do any major rewrite. Again, maintainability was a key factor in choosing these things. Now that we have based the rock solid foundation for a robust, secure, and easy to use authentication framework, let's see how it simplifies authentication. It can be used for primary authentication. If you already have primary authentication, established against your resources, it can very well be used to aid second factor authentication. In fact, we can use this framework to enable truly passwordless experience across all the platforms. However, we faced several challenges when we rolled this framework out to millions of our users worldwide. Different users have different devices with different capabilities. Some have state-of-the-art biometric fingerprinting authentication mechanisms, while some use just plain old pin lock. We decided to adopt the protocol so that it doesn't mandate any specific hardware versions to be present so that we do not have such restrictions to gate the usage of this feature. It just adapts to the best possible capability the device has. Backup factor. This is still an ongoing challenge. How do we make sure that the users have an equivalent, secure, and usable authentication mechanism to access their account in case they do not have access to their primary authentication mechanisms or devices? Key rotation. We are talking about public key cryptography, and the standard cryptographic guidelines suggest that we always rotate the key pair at some point of time. However, it is not that trivial in this case. 
Hence, even the spec also leaves it up to the user's discretion as to what should we do for key rotation. We decided not to complicate things further and ask the user to re-register if needed if we have to address key rotation. Let's see some areas beyond just authentication where this framework can actually help us. Account recovery. If you have an already established means for authentication, we can very well use this framework to do account recovery and secure the weakest link in the account access ecosystem. Step up authentication. If the user is already signed into the app and is trying to do an elevated operation against their account, which might be susceptible for high risk, then we can use this framework to challenge the user, notify the user, and ask them to securely approve or reject the request. Trusted device management. We are setting up key sets into the device, giving device the capability to approve or reject an authentication securely. That kind of establishes some trust on the device. And hence, we can leverage this framework to perform several trusted device management related actions. Continuous authentication. We can very well use this framework to continuously evaluate an existing session for a user and try to extend the session so that we provide wonderful experiences to the user and reduce the friction to login at regular intervals. WebAuthn. We talked about FIDO UAF and push notifications, but as Ashish mentioned earlier, we also looked into WebAuthn. Isn't that the next gen protocol in the authentication and FIDO space? Well, yes, it is. We did implement the platform authenticator using the WebAuthn specification on eBay.com. We also implemented roaming authenticator or security key support as a primary means of authentication using the WebAuthn spec again on eBay.com. In order to again achieve the goals we laid out before, we evaluated certain open source solutions this time and the one which fits our need, we just extended it and hosted it alongside the existing FIDO deployment so that we can achieve maintainability and the same deployment can serve variety of use cases. However, we hit lots of challenges again. Here are a few of them. The spec does not support multiple top level domains. For a relying party like eBay, which has multiple websites and multiple domains, the same user has to register again and again if they want to leverage the benefits of this protocol. However, that is very poor user experience. And hence, for now, we have limited WebAuth and release only to eBay.com for, for this very reason. Backup factor, that's an ongoing challenge before and it's an ongoing challenge now as well. How do we make sure users have a secondary secure and equivalent authentication mechanism to access their account when they are not able to use their primary devices enrolled into the passwordless authentication mechanisms. Inconsistent experience. While rolling out this feature on various platforms, what we saw is there are certain nuances which differ in terms of how the user is presented with options to use the web authentication protocol. They might look very trivial in terms of the technical specifications, but when we try to cater a diverse, diverse population, it is very important that the users see a consistent experience across all platforms. That's what they expect authentication to be, and that's what gives them confidence that they are securely accessing their account. Automation. Well, in order to speed up the product development life cycle and make sure we ship high quality releases to our customers every time without breaking anything in production, we rely heavily on automation and testing. However, it has been very challenging to automate the end-to-end -end flows using the WebAuthn protocol. There have been certain assistance provided by some browsers and plugins. However, there is still a lot more work to do here in order for us to achieve automation compared to other mechanisms. So far, if you are interested, you can actually give some shot at using these products on ebay.com. Here are some technical blocks to understand further and also links on how you can actually experience those against your account on eBay if you want to. We also have some links for the eBay open source library if you are interested in getting your hands onto the code and trying out some of these protocols. With that said, I would like to hand it back over to Ashish to share some final thoughts to wrap up the presentation. And thank you so much for listening to this. Ashish, back to you.
Thanks, Anand. So like Anand mentioned in the last two years, I think about 18 months ago is when we implemented UAF through our push notification authentication method. We launched WebAuth10 on Android and Chrome about uh, 12 months ago, and I think just two weeks ago, so it's too early, uh, but about two weeks ago, we launched uh, the security key or roaming authenticator at ebay.com. And given the data that we have seen both from push notification and from the web authentication protocol, we have been pretty happy with the successful deployment in terms of the number of adoption and the number of the sign-in conversion rate that we measure. Both of them have been, have been great. And hence, you know, the, for the first time, I feel like we have a protocol that does the right balance in between security and usability. In fact, uh, primarily on the mobile devices, our sign-in completion rate using a device biometric you know, underneath the WebAuthn protocol is even better than the password entry flow that you would normally see. So it's, it's been a great progress. It's been a great journey. Now, having said that, we still have a long ways to go. You know, when I look into where do we go next, both as eBay and as an industry around the FIDO protocol, there is still a lack of awareness. There is still a lack of adoption and the cross platform support isn't where we would like it to be. So there is still some more maturity we would expect. Now, you know, I'm glad to, to see that, you know, Google and Microsoft and now Apple have joined the board and all of them have done the support. And iOS 14 in the latest release now also supports WebAuthn. However, there are still some difference in implementations and difference in the experience of each platform that is not consistent and it has been a challenge and one of the constant feedback that we continue to hear from our customer base. The second point is that we cannot look at authentication in a silo. And you know, we look at as a three-legged tools between registration, account recovery, and authentication. And the reason I say that is that the, the device biometric or web authen, if these are strong auth protocols, we also need to have the appropriate stronger recovery flow uh, because it does not make sense to have a very strong auth flow to, uh, to access, but then the recovery can be done simply via an email. However, the moment you try to, to change the registration on the onboarding flow so that your enrollment requires multiple auth methods, you end up getting into the abandonment issues. So the right balance where you enroll into device biometric or web authen and have a good strong recovery method, there is still kind of a lack of best practices. And we've been experimenting on a few things to learn and grow with it. And you know, some of the things that you see today is that maybe you know, register using multiple devices, you know, not all of your customer base uh, would be the right candidate to have two devices to enroll. Sometimes it is call the customer rep, which is too expensive. Sometimes you hear that maybe you can take a printout of safe uh, safety codes and then keep them somewhere and use them for recovery. So none of them in my mind are the right optimal solution. And we still have some work to do as an industry to consider account access end to end as a right flow. The third point here is the flow around social login and FIDO. Like I mentioned that we started to support login with Facebook and Google and now with Apple into eBay. And we have a good amount of users who come into that flow and hence they skip the authentication directly at eBay. Having said that, we still have fairly large population which comes to eBay directly and create a new account. Now, I don't really have a solution to this one, but the idea that the onboarding flow, when you outsource your login to a third party provider, such as Google or Facebook or, or anything else, but you still wanna maintain the authentication as a follow-up, both from an experience standpoint and also to be able to augment your internal fraud and detection and risk capabilities, that flow has not completely been established. And I think, so this is a work where I feel like as an industry, we can spend a little bit more time together where if you are a relying party, such as eBay, and you wanna get into the passwordless flow, and you wanna be able to support 
third party IDPs, as well as device based authentication, what is the right touch points and the right integration? So I'm hoping that you know, we continue this conversation either as part of OIDF or as part of the FIDO and kind of mature both as eBay and collectively as an industry. So on that note, I wanna thank this audience uh, for listening to us. I wanna thank the, the uh, Authenticate uh, team for giving us a chance to share our story and our learnings and deployment challenges. Thank you.